friends and welcome to the channel. I'm Luke, Thunderhead289 here on YouTube and today we're doing something a little bit different. Now the little outfit I work for, OAM Quick Covers in Ames, Iowa, was putting together a Christmas party and at the time I was a new hire and so I threw my hat in the ring for one of the Christmas party activities, which was a mistake on their end to let me do that. You know, to be fair, they didn't know. They know me now, but uh, you know, I never do anything too normal. So we employ a lot of college students from Iowa State University there. And you know, I thought we're gonna have some fun with these guys. And so basically I bought a bunch of these DIY uh, obstacle avoidance cars. They're, you know, open source programming and all that. So you can get in and you can mess with them. And at Quick Covers, I do a lot of the automation controls. And if you're familiar with me on YouTube, you know, that's the opposite side of the spectrum of what I do here. Typically carburetors, ignition timing, very mechanical things, but I actually play both sides of that spectrum. So anyway, I took these and then I went one step farther and added Bluetooth to them. And then I wrote an app for those. So instead of an obstacle avoidance car alone, now you could control the direction of the car itself. So I thought, ah, eh, we have a five axis CNC and I thought, why don't we marry these DIY remote control cars with a five axis and do a Thunderdome style battle royale, whatever. And basically it was just gonna end in complete destruction, which you'll see it absolutely did. But uh, anyway, we'll get to that here in a moment, but I just wanna give you a quick rundown on quick covers. They've always been just great to me and great group of guys to work with and just a good company overall made here in the USA. The primary problem that Quick Covers was invented to be a solution for is rust on vehicles, especially in commonly rusted areas on, say, pickup trucks. Um, a lot of traditional repairs don't last very long due to the weather conditions and the salt that we experience on Iowa roads. The solution that we came up with is a rust-free product being the actual Quick Cover itself, a plastic uh, vacuum form product that will actually slip over a vehicle's rusted area and cover that up uh, and combined with rust inhibitors will last for a very long time. Repair that used to cost $4,000 can now be done for $1,000 or $1,500. It used to be in the shop for two weeks, now it can be done in two days. So there's, there's a lot of value being added and it's a really beautiful product when it's done. Every time we install one, we still get that feeling of that first one that just snapped right into place and looked perfect and it, it's incredible to be able to take something that's in your head and make it come to fruition and then see it on a vehicle and see a customer happy. Just that whole process is awesome. And once we had kind of proven the concept, we realized that we wanted to make these really large products and that required a bigger machine. Those are really expensive. So we actually designed our own and built it from the ground up. So we have not only had to figure out how to make the products, but we had to make the manufacturing equipment to make the products. Kind of a new concept and a lot of people aren't aware of this as an option for their vehicles. So not only are we trying to educate body shops, but we're also trying to let the general public know there is an option other than traditional repair, which unfortunately doesn't last long. The money that we'll be using from the competition would be able to go towards creating new product lines, uh, being able to diversify those products so we could get our products out to more customers in the state of Iowa and even across the country. So there you have it, my friends. And you know, I just love working with these guys. It's a great group of folks making a great product, all manufactured from start to finish on American soil. And it's pretty funny. One of the common thoughts folks have when they see our before and after pictures is that, you know, they're Photoshopped and I can assure you they aren't. It really does look that good. We take a lot of painstaking care to perfectly match the existing body lines and geometry of the vehicle, you know, to give you that perfect fit. Uh, we put a lot of effort into it. So Anyway, I'll leave a link to the Quick Covers website below if you want to take a look. We're continuing to make new product lines and different things at a rapid rate, so perhaps we have something for your vehicle. And the positive reviews of actual buyers tell the tale. If you have a rusty truck, there's a good chance we got you covered. But with that, let's get back to our uh, DIY remote control car Thunderdome thing we got going on here. Now naturally you know this devolved very quickly and some of these became very custom. 
custom uh, with a capital K that is. Oh yeah, that works way better. <laughs> and so Alex and I, we prepped our five axis CNC router for straight <laughs> debacleville and set a cage up around it. So, you know, it contain all the cars within and, you know, complete destruction was about to ensue. What was that number again? 4006. Okay. He might have a hell of a time with this bastard. He won't call it up. He's right there. <laughs> there we go. I thought this was awesome. Who yeah. wants to get towed to destruction? Well, you got a tail whip into it. Yeah, I know. You gotta do something. Oh! So I messed it up, but then I just rolled with it instead of changing it up. So they're all set. Everybody, welcome to the 2020 OAM Christmas party. We're going to start out here in our uh, robot uh, dome of death here with a little bit of Rocket League action. <laughs> and then shortly we're going to be implementing the CNC machine with the uh, router pass of death. Save Go! it! Oh. Send it. Oh. Ah. Dang it! Come on! <laughs> Let's do it works! <laughs> oh. Spin move! The spin move works! <laughs> to the CNC mode now. So we're gonna have a giant spinning bit of death coming down upon us. Time for destruction! Yeah! Complete destruction. No one is gonna leave alive out of there this time. Survived round one to this point. Can someone knock me off the fence? All right, we're gonna allow a five-minute pit stop. The only thing you're allowed to use is duct tape. If you can get it running again, you're back in. Ready, go. <laughs> I don't know how to get the 
running off the wheels. Adds a little bit of sheet metal damage back here. So we're just doing a little bit of sheet metal repair here. Good as now. Just taping the sensor to the front because it got ripped apart. It won't swivel anymore. But when I turn it on, one wheel does move. So there's life. All right, give me the rundown. What we got? Uh, she needs some body repair. Got the sensors put back on there. All in all, though, she was uh, held up pretty well. Right, what we got? So we got some wiring issues. We're going to get some wire strippers and try to put our positive lead back together. The negative, I'm not sure where it goes, but we also have pretty severe damage to our batteries with battery acid coming out. So we'll, we'll see if we can get anything going here. That's a short. Okay, that's smoking. <laughs> that definitely, I thought that went to that, but oh god, no. No, no that was actually really dumb. Okay, this is battery acid all over my hair. <laughs> Fix the program, but it knocked its programming port clean off. So yeah. wait, it's no, just... no. Remember, mine's backwards. Oh yeah, you put yours on wrong. I put mine on wrong, and it was just, it saved the day. <laughs> Lauren, have you made the first? I did. I can get yes. one wheel to work. I lost mine. Okay, it's turning on, yeah. which means it should be okay. <laughs> My wires got clipped here, um, also here from the battery source. She's totaled. Where are your axles? Oh, they're still there. Oh, yeah, they're still there. You got it. Uh, oh, maybe a little but, elbow grease so and it'll get back up and running. No, I don't have eyeballs, but it was still spinning, the axles, so I think it'll run even. Careful with your dangler down below there. 
<laughs> oh, this is broken. This was for the sensor. It's just like nothing ever even happened. <laughs> Retaped it. Some of the body work was damaged. And pop the wheel back on? Oh, yeah, pop the wheels back on. Elon Musk would be proud. <laughs> if he wants to give us some money, that'd be nice. Or a cyber truck. Or a cyber truck. <laughs> no, he's seen what he's you've done. Out, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh he's, he's seen what you do to cyber trucks. He's not giving you a cyber truck. <laughs> yeah. I think, I guess, we're going to call it because our fence is loose and it can actually damage our machine, which is a lot more expensive than these little cars and everything else. So. I think with that, what do you guys say? The Cybertruck was the victor there? Yeah. yeah. You're a madman, you know that? I've never seen a CNC program to look scary and intimidating, but... Who would use a $150,000 CNC to wreck $20 <laughs> Chinese <laughs> remote control cars?